Good morning and welcome to Tuesday of Holy Week. I pray that you and your family are faring well as we continue to be in isolation under the stay-at-home rules in order to keep the virus from spreading during this pandemic. Uh, this morning we are in uh, chapter 11 through 13. It's almost three whole chapters dedicated to Tuesday of Holy Week in the book of Mark. Uh, the bulk of it, I have to say, 11 and 12 uh, is dedicated to Jesus confronting the, uh, being confronted by the religious authorities, the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes uh, confront Jesus and continue to question his authority and try to trip him up and make him look foolish or make him look bad. But uh, of course, Jesus is too clever for that and, and meets them at every turn and ultimately it increases his popularity and makes it more difficult for the chief priests to confront Jesus or to um, have him arrested. So they get a little nervous uh, as he continues to become popular. Now I'm, I'm late in posting this because earlier I... Uh, when I recorded it, it was very long because this is such a huge section. Um, and so I'm cutting out a lot of it. I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about chapter, uh, the end of chapter 11 and chapter 12. Suffice to say that this is Jesus spending a lot of time dealing with this confrontation between him and the elders. And I, I invite you to read it and, and see it in that light. The area I really wanted to talk about this morning is is chapter 13. Now chapter 13 begins with Jesus and his disciples coming into Jerusalem and as they're walking past the temple the disciples are observing how wonderful magnificent the temple is and and uh, admiring the architecture and making comments to that effect and Jesus tells them that the temple will be destroyed. He says, no, not one stone will be left unturned of this. And then Jesus goes on to describe, um, to, to speak what is called in Mark, the little apocalypse. Um, it's, it's kind of written in the genre of apocalyptic literature. Of course, the big apocalypse is Revelation. But here uh, in Mark, there's just a little snippet where Jesus is uh, talking about the things to come. And, and, and apocalypse literally means revealing, uh, literally means, you know, uh, predicting what's going to come. And uh, this is the longest speech in the book of Mark, and it foretells a lot of different things, such as false messiahs and prophets uh, coming in and trying to deceive people. It speaks of wars and rumors of wars, uh, talks about earthquakes and famines. Um, and I couldn't help but think of this uh, writing when we had our earthquake here a couple weeks ago. Uh, it speaks of persecutions for, the, for those who call on the name of Christ and then refers to something called the desolating sacrilege. Uh, this, this desolating sacrilege actually is a reference to something that happened two centuries before Jesus came along. And it was a time when um, Antiochus Epiphanes IV was over all of Judea and uh, came into Jerusalem and slaughtered a pig on the altar of God in the temple and, and many other uh, desecrations that happened in the temple. And it was a, it was a defining moment for the for the people in Jerusalem, for the Jews in Jerusalem. And it was something that, they, that, that has stuck with the psyche of the Jewish people up into the time of Christ and way beyond that. Um, in fact, all of that is, is articulated in the book of Daniel. Uh, the book of Daniel is uh, set in the Babylonian exile, but what it's really talking about is this time when Antiochus was desecrating the temple and the Jewish people were under this persecution by the, uh, by the occupying forces at that time. And Jesus says there's going to be a desolating sacrilege that happens. Of course, he's talking about Rome. He's talking about the, the destruction of the temple that is about to happen or is, 
already happening at the time when Mark is writing this. Jesus also talks about a time of suffering and cosmic disorder and, uh, you know, the, the, the stars falling and the blood red moons and things like that. And then speaks of the Son of Man coming on the clouds. And within all of this, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. One is that every author, every writer of the New Testament was expecting Jesus to come. Uh, the earliest writings, they were expecting Jesus to come like in two weeks. Uh, the later writings, they kind of reconciled themselves to the fact that Jesus was, this was going to take a little longer. But certainly everyone was expecting Jesus to come back and to set things right, to, to herald in the kingdom of God as Jesus had proclaimed it and to bring about... Uh, a new day for God's people. Of course, <clears throat> that that didn't happen, and it's been 2,000 years, and that uh, still hasn't happened uh, in quite that same way. However, ev again, in the you, you, when reading the New Testament, one must keep that in mind, that there was this expectation of Jesus uh, coming again. And, and this was really about justice. This was really about a people suffering under persecutions, suffering under occupation, being a persecuted people, and recognizing that their their lives were not in their own control, and what they longed for was justice. Uh, when we hear these texts about the destruction of the world and the, the coming of the kingdom of God and all of that, it sounds a little frightening, but for people under the thumb of Rome and under persecution, that sounded like justice. That seemed like an appropriate thing to do. God must bring about this change because we are we are not in control of ourselves. The other thing that uh, the other context that needs to be kept in mind as we're reading this is that Mark and uh, Mark was living in a time when the destruction of the temple was had just happened or was happening at this time. There was a rebellion that broke out in Jerusalem in 66 AD and um, the Romans came and lay siege to Jerusalem and and funneled everybody into the city and then locked down the city for two years and Josephus writes about this and many other historians wrote about how horrific it was for the people in Jerusalem at that time water was scarce food had run out there were dead bodies lying in the streets People had resorted to cannibalism. It was a it was a devastating time. And then after two years, the Romans entered the city and razed it to the ground and destroyed the temple utterly and completely. And this was the time when Mark is living. Now, Mark's community, of course, was in northern Galilee, but um, he was writing just as this was all taking place. And so this is the context under which Mark is talking about Jesus coming again and describing, you know, horrible situations and violent times and persecutions and famine and wars and all these kinds of things. And there's a couple of things that come out of, of this writing. One is, uh, you know, stay faithful and beware that you don't get led astray. So remain faithful to God because ultimately... The point of the apocalyptic literature that Mark is writing here and the point of Jesus coming again is that God gets the last word. God has the final say. And even though things are looking bad right now, even though it looks like the end of the world, it is not. What it is is, is terrible times happening and God is still at work and God ultimately will bring about a conclusion that is good. Uh, God will have the last word. God will get us through this time and there will be a new day. Uh, and we are charged in this to stay alert, keep awake, and keep watch for uh, God is at work. And I think that this is uh, very pertinent in a time when we, in an unprecedented time, when we're dealing with uh, something that we've never experienced before, 
like this virus and all of the disruption and chaos that it has caused in all of our lives. It's frightening stuff. Uh, it makes us feel very out of control. And I think the value of the, these kinds of stories that come to us from the Bible, while I don't necessarily expect to see Jesus coming on the clouds uh, at any time, I do expect that the ways of God, the things of God, the justice of the kingdom of God, the, the love of God will ultimately prevail over every obstacle, every challenge, every, every unprecedented time that comes along in history. At the end of the day, the kingdom of God will win out, particularly as we remain faithful, as we remain um, alert and and remain faithful to living out that kingdom. Um, it's a time for us to look around and to see where God is at work in our lives and to see how the Holy Spirit is, is living into the kingdom of God among us, within us, and around us. Uh, and so I find this comforting. I pray that you do as well. I pray that we are able to remain faithful, to turn to God in those times of struggle, and to lean on God's strength and courage and faithfulness as we go through this unprecedented time. And to be the church, be the body of Christ with and for each other. Let us pray. Oh, loving and gracious God, as we hear this message of hope that comes to us in 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 fearful terms, but a message of hope nonetheless for these fearful times. I just pray that you would bless us as we continue to uh, commit ourselves to being faithful and to being alert and watchful and looking for how you are breaking into the world, how you are getting us through all of this time and where you are at work around us. Uh, be with us all. Keep us all safe and healthy. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again tomorrow.